PA. It has been met from who you supported. It has been met from who you support. The organization has taken a decision and we are not happy about that decision, but we will respect it as a decision of the organization. Let me tell you, the majority can also be wrong. The majority can emerge Bena, 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 and the maybe they are wrong. But you respect the wrong decision of the majority. You don't go around. You don't go around denouncing the chairperson of our province. Because you don't only undermine these delegates who are gathered here. You are also undermining us. In particular, the deputy president who came to preside over this process. And let me tell you, you are supporting Yazini. You don't stop supporting Yazini. That's what, that's what, that's what, that's what we mean. They were wrong and all of that, but I believe in Yazini. But you don't go. We don't go and destabilize our organization in the name of Yazim. And Yazim doesn't go and allow you to destabilize our organization in this way. If Yazim is a true leader and a PPP leader and a loyal leader, he will say, do not destabilize the EFF in my name. To not serve our organization is my name. I am a member of the EFF and I will always respect the decision of the EFF. So, fighters, if you are here and you are contesting each other and want to look at each other, you see the enemy in front of you, you are in a new organization. Because there is no enemy in this world. If you are Marxist, you will know that Marx and Lenin teaches us that the enemy is described through each class position. You are either the owner of the means of production or you are not. In this hall, there is no one who owns the means of production. In this hall, there is no one who is right to monopoly capital. In this one, there is no one who subscribes to white supremacy. Therefore, there is no enemy in this hall. We are all members of the EFF. If you subscribe to Fanon, you will know that in this hall they are only black people and therefore blacks can never be enemies to each other. They are wanting and they must protect each other against white problems. So why do you see an enemy? Why do you feel disappointed? Why do you feel demoralized when you have lost? You shouldn't, because a black man has ascended to power. I still see myself in that black man. I still see myself in that white man. They are no enemies. They are political competitors. The competition is over. Now back to work. Everyone. Anyone who feels sick about the pizza group and that group, you are not to a fair. You can hear it. You are concerned to come and invite us here. We contested each other because we thought this one can do better than this one. It doesn't mean hatred, it means judgment. This is how I see. Yeah.
won. You have not won anything. This weekend there is only one winner. It's Orlando Brandon. No one has won anything here. No one. There is no trophy. If you have won, where is the trophy? There are no winners here. There are no losers here. The EFF came out of this conference united as one because we won the EFF. We did not win the individual. Correct. Nelson Mandela, who has won this and is no more. Owen Tambo is no more. Chris Ani is no more. Willie Mandela is no more. It is you who are going to produce those people. You can't produce them if you are divided. A divided house, DP will never produce a king. But contestation is not division. It is what it is. It is a contestation. So those who want to confuse democracy for division, they will have themselves to clean. In the EFF, all positions are contested, including that one of the president to the last position. And once they are presided over by IMSA, an independent body, that has got nothing to do with us. Some of us speak after you have elected because we can't hold the truth back. That's why I come after elections. Because if I speak before elections, some of these people you elected, you are not going to elect. I would have called them by name and told you their sins. Because your former provincial secretary was removed as a provincial secretary to preside over elections and sent to go and preside over elections of a local municipality from a province to preside over a municipality. He did not come back with a single PRC. Yet, you promoted him to deputy chairperson. And you come here and say to me, we want to replace the ANC and you do away from the ANC that when people don't perform, you promote them to higher position. Let me leave with DP because I don't want to get into problem. I'm giving you an example of why I don't speak before you elect so that you don't blame me that no, he's the one who influenced us. But there are certain things I will never keep quiet. There are certain things that I just not welcome in the EFF. That's what you did to us here. The whole secretary of a problem gets sent to a smallest local municipality, brings no single seat of a PR, gets promoted to a deputy chair. What type of leaders do we want to replace the ANC? Today, those leaders who left us, Verna, who have lost, they gave us 155,899 votes. It's not enough. We don't, we don't want that in the Eastern Cape. The people of Eastern Cape want more. They are looking forward to the leadership of the EFF. I hope this 155,000 plus is not going to come back with a less vote. Because if you do that, you will know who we are. Your judgment is on retaining this number or increasing it, doubling it, and taking over the Eastern Cape. Here in Eastern Cape, if we are not number one, we are number two. And if we are not if we are number two, it means there is no winner. All of them are under 50%. They must come to EFF to beg to go with 
the EFF in government. We don't want lazy leadership. So, the new secretary, I'm watching you closely. Because that position of a secretary is not a position of mom, pepper, papa. It's not the one that will behave like asking for papa. That position is an engine. Without that position, this Rolls Royce cannot move. It doesn't matter how beautiful the car is. If you go and take out the engine from the Rolls Royce, a beautiful Rolls Royce is no longer a car, it's a scrap. So I hope you did not give us a scrap. You gave us a working world machine that will take the EFF into the next level. Comrades, the people of Tata, the people of Kadesha, the people of Kunu, all of them are saying they want clean water. Radio FF in the Eastern Cape wrapping up its third People's Assembly. Just uh, some remarks from party leader Julius Malema. But in other news, we move on to, uh, we see rather former ANC they President Jacob Zuma's night. But given to everyone. They say here in East London, Buffalo City, they want jobs that are given to all the people and not relatives of those who are in power in Buffalo City. When you live here, you must give them answer on how you are going to remove the ANC and give them all of these things. Comrade, South Africa is watching closely how the EFF conferences are presiding and they are going. The way you have carried yourself is a defeating people's assembly which gives hope to our people. The discipline we have seen, I was told there was a person who refused to give you accommodation even when it was paid and he wanted more money. The delegates who were sleeping there carried themselves with discipline until the matters were resolved. Even when you were provoked, you never responded to provocation because you knew your purpose of being here. You never went to the beach. You slept very little because you knew you came to do work here. We are looking for that. We are looking for your discipline. Members of the EFF, never in your life join a faction. Because a faction has got its own dis disciplinary code of conduct. You must answer to the DC of the faction and answer to the EFF DC. Because the faction works in this way. When there is a lady you like from the other faction, you can't date her. Because once you do that, they say you are selling out. When you ask, why do you say I'm selling out? We saw you with her at the beach, you are selling out. How can we take another member of the EFF be a selling out? Where is that in the code of conduct of the EFF? So, you guys join fiction and give yourself a more heavy duty of having to answer to the leaders of fiction. So, you want to enjoy being a member? You want to live free in the EFF? Follow the constitution of the EFF. Follow the guidelines of the EFF. Even when your idea has not won the day, you must know it might win the day the following day. So you don't have to do that. Mara, if you came here for selfish reasons of wanting to be this or that, at all costs, the EFF will humble you. You will never get that position. When you are about to get it, someone gets it. Then it goes away. The next conference, when you are about to get it, someone gets it. 
then you lose patience. You leave. When they now want to look for you to give you your turn, you are nowhere to be found. Because you became impatient by virtue of having joined the organization for wrong reasons. You must go and study the life of Winnie Mandela. She comes from here in Pizan. Go and study her life. Winnie Mandela was the only female. I know the things I'm saying don't like them. That's why I don't give you one. Thank you. William Mandela. When ANC was banned, she was the only woman in the 80s who could say Viva ANC more than men. She's the one who traveled the world popularizing the release of her husband. When the ANC flag was crime to be to be found in its position, she will raise the ANC flag high in the 80s. When they came from prison, when they came from exile, when they came from underground, the first person they isolated was her. They destroyed her. They said she's an undesirable person. What did Winnie Mandela do? The more the ANC ill-treated her, the more loyal she stayed, the more disciplined she became, and said, I am the ANC. She never said, because I'm the one who raised the flag, when no one could raise the flag, I must be the president at all costs. If you don't make me president, I'm leaving. No. They went to Mafike, they denied us the president we deserve and put Zuma to be the president on the place of Winnie Mandela. When I grew up under Winnie Mandela, I knew her to be the most hated woman who's dangerous, who kills people, who people don't want because that is the narrative they sold to us when we were growing up. But I always knew that Willy Mandela is a leader of our struggle. They wanted to choose leaders for us. When Willy Mandela died, ENCA went to write and report nonsense about him. What did the people of South Africa do? That is the first action I saw when South Africa said to ENCA, you are reporting nonsense. You can't do that. This is not we you we know. Remember what told me that it is not liked by anyone. South Africans de defended him. On a Friday, a day before a burial, I went to fetch her from a mutual. When we came back with her from a mutual, I found granites with chairs taking the chest outside their yard, sitting down as we were dragging her to a home. The grannies were waving goodbyes to this woman who was told is hated by everyone. <laughs> waving goodbyes, no one mobilized them, no one forced them out of their houses. They could not walk, but they knew their leaders. They should sit outside and wait and said this is the only way we can give her the last respect. I thought that was the end. When we finished at the stadium, on the day of the period, we were taking her to a grave. It was pouring, raining heavily. The end one side, one side was closed, the other one was open. The cars which were going to the Soweto direction were allowed to move. The ones which were going to forward were stopped. Only the cars who were in the convoy were allowed to be on the M1. These cars which were moving stopped on their own. 
under heavy rains, waved their good fight. No one said to them, stop under heavy rain, go and salute. If you don't salute, we don't give you jobs. The most hated woman, the most rejected woman, the people came out of their houses and stood under the rain to salute him. We turned into four ways where black, elite, and white people share the space. Both black and white came out what was even worse. White people allowed their children to come out and stand under the heavy rain to wave to a hated woman. Why did they salute him? Why did they wait for him? Her discipline, her loyalty to the struggle for the liberation of our people has earned her the title Mother of the Nation. Who doesn't wait when your mother has passed on? Who doesn't say goodbyes when the mother has passed on? When Castro said, history will absorb me. I saw that in action when we were buried with Mandela, who required nobody's validation, spoke her mind, stood firm on principle. Even on the face of death, they locked her in a solitary confinement. Many who stay there alone, she sat in that cell alone, they were trying to break her. The only thing that showed life which she could speak to was ends. She was talking to ends in her cell and sharing her thoughts and her ideas in the cell. When they released her, she was more determined. She was never a provincial chief. She was never a secretary. She was never a minister. She was never a president. She never threw her toys out of the court. You have never been arrested. You have never been persecuted. So few people know your name. You come here and lose a position and want everything to stop. We are not here for position. We are here for idea. We are here for idea. So when persecution faces you, when rejection faces you, when you think my organization is still treating me and is not treating me the same way it treats others, that's the time you must show more loyalty to your organization. <laughs> have, you must have a conviction of your own. When they were hitting me, when they pushed me, I said to them, take all the positions, suspend me from standing to any position, leave me with the membership. They still refuse and push me to where I am. I never left them because I knew I was not in it for positions. I was in it for the ideas and those ideas were the economic emancipation of our people. When they locked out the platform, for economic emancipation, we had to create an alternative. But we were not going to leave them because they removed us from positions. We never begged for positions. Why would you come to the EFF that was formed by people who never begged for positions and come and fight for positions? We fight for ideas and not for positions. Comrades, Whites are there to finish us off. We can't afford to finish each other. If you doubt, go and look at Dalimpo. Today, we are being asked how much is Dalimpo being paid for representing the public protector. But there was Paul Pretorius, who was an evidence leader in the Zondo Commission, a white man was paid 38,000 per day. No one, no one has ever asked, 
How much is this man being paid per day? But because today it's an African man representing an African woman, we must now know how much are they spending on this man. Money, how much Dalimpov is being paid is splashed all over through screenshots, social media. This is how much Mpofu is being paid. Mpofu does it. They didn't say Mpofu has stolen money or has done corruption. They are punishing him for being paid for the job he has performed. But a white man who has spent two billion in a useless Zondo commission was paid 38,000 per day, not per year. My mother died without having been paid 38,000 because she worked as a domestic worker. Per day. No one has ever asked a question. A white man goes on SABC, Paul O'Sullivan. Paul O'Sullivan thinks that everybody in South Africa is scared of him. Someone who's got access to him, he must be told that we in the EFF are not scared of Paul O'Sullivan. We will never allow Paul O'Sullivan to hold this country at ransom. No British spy will ever hold this country at ransom. Paul O'Sullivan, who is a handler of Cyril Ramaphosa from apartheid times, goes in an interview. Sakina Komendo asks a simple question. A white man becomes speech and starts speaking to her rudely because who's this girl to ask me questions? I'm a white man. No black girl will ask me this type of questions. That's what you are saying effectively. But let me tell you, no NGO has issued a statement condemning him because he's a white man insulting an African woman. No Sanaf has issued a statement. No tribal authority, no church pastor, no elders nonsense. That's why now I don't listen to all these schools irrespective of their ages because they are hypocrites. When it favors them, they say nothing. Where is Reverend Chigan, who was making noise here saying he's an elder, elder veteran? Where is uh, Musima? Where is that group of veterans which we say were veterans? Hey, Zuma is corrupt. Here is a man, a favorite of white capital, Ramaphosa, who was found with millions of dollars in his house. They all went under the same mattress of dollars. Because everything white man favors is the right thing. Ramaphosa commits crime. The whole media wants to convince us how that crime is not crime. Why can't you ask yourself a question, you ANC members who are listening to us bloody crooks through uh, YouTube? Why don't you ask yourself, what was going to happen to Malema if those dollars were found inside Malema's house? Why are we not equal before the law, all of us? A person who occupies that office of the president must be the cleanest person, more than the word key. And Ramaphosa is found with dollars. A white man inside an African female. An African lawyer represents an African female. All of that the white man doesn't like. Even our own black people join to ask how much is that for being paid? Hey, what, what? Only the EFF said 
This nonsense of Paul O'Sullivan is unacceptable. Only the EFF said, you can't treat an African woman like a slave, even if uh, Mukherban is not a good public protector, she still has got the right. You can't treat her the same way slaves were treated. Slaves were not allowed to have lawyers. Today, in Parliament, after the constitutional court said, Mukwebani must have lawyers. A year continues without Mukwebani having lawyers. And we still claim that we are in a democratic South Africa where we are all equal. I spoke in Parliament. The EFF spoke. We did, they ruled against us. We don't speak to win. We seek to record it in the history of our society that one day when children come to read history, they must know there was a time where an organization existed to represent black people unashamedly. We will not leave here. We don't have to like him. Even hardened criminals who raped 27 women at the time still have lawyers. Still have lawyers. If they rock up in court without lawyers after raping, after killing, a court gets postponed because they, got, they too have rights. A public protector who hasn't killed anyone, who only went against the powerful. Why do you all want to pretend like the Western High, Cape High Court didn't say Ramaphosa suspended her because he was paying revenge after the public protector said, answer the 37 questions on Palapa. She was not suspended because she stole anything. She was not suspended because she killed anyone. She was suspended because she dared question the powerful. She touched the untouchables. If she had asked us those questions, she would still be alive today. She would be a public protector with more benefits because she went against Ramaphosa's enemies. Our support for Busisiwe Mkweba it's not because we say she's the best of the best public protectors. It's a, a support based on principle. Do not fire people because you hate them, even when they've not done anything wrong. She has not done anything wrong. Even if the rulings are wrong, she is like a judge. You can take a rulings to the court for review and set aside which is what they've done many a times. So why do you behave like you don't have a recourse? Fighters, ESCOM is being destroyed. And when ESCOM gets destroyed and renewable energy is introduced, electricity is going to be in the hands of the private sector. When the electricity is in the hands of the private sector, the first thing the private sector does is to cut jobs by half. The second thing the private sector does is to increase the price. I don't want you to go and do research. Let me give you a quick example. SAA. I told you, South Africa, that once SAA collapsed, the people of the whole of Limpopo, Kaute, Northwest, Mpumalanga, and everywhere else, they will no longer go to Cape Town. Cape Town will be left for the rich. Look at the flights now. Those of you who come from Eastern Cape and visit a lot in Houghton and come back to East London. This December, if you are lucky, single trip, if you are lucky to come from Joburg to East London, it will be 4,500. And that is your salary and your bonus. <laughs> so, Marco Duca must just stay there. Because they won't come back. And don't blame them for not coming back 
There's no money. The flights are crazy. If you want to come back home in East London, start paying your flight now for next year, December. Because it's going to be worse than that. They collapsed SAA, brought the private sector, reduced employees, increased the, pri the prices. ESCOM is going to be like that. And when ESCOM is like that, me and you, we are going to go back where we were. Remember, we grew up without electricity. Those who are fortunate to have now. Those who are fortunate to have now. Those days are coming back. You will have electricity wires, but there won't be power. Because you won't afford to buy. And who will not afford? It's a black man. So we are going there. I'm telling you this, we must, we're the only organization that must ask from under heavy rain. We knew even after marching, there's nothing we can do. The powerful have spoken, but we have marked it in history. So that when your children do not have electricity in the next five years to come, they will not blame it on us. They will ask you a question, where were you? when they were decommissioning power stations of ESCO. Where were you when they were destroying coal mines in South Africa, the same countries that say coal is contributing to pollution? They are the ones who are now saying, bring your coal to Germany, bring your coal to Europe. Yet, you must not use your coal. Your big nose president has signed that and said, no, you can take the scope, we don't want it anymore. Let me tell you, once coal mines are closed, there will no longer be a province called Mpumalana. Because that province depends on coal mines for economic sustainability. So, comrades, SAA has collapsed, Dinel has collapsed, Transnet has collapsed. Prasa has collapsed. They've never, they've never built anything new. Everything they found, they destroyed it. I keep on saying this because we want to continue to remind the South Africans that they too are a problem. All of these things are happening right in front of their eyes, not in secret, yet they continue to trust the same puppet of imperialism to empower the South African population. Comrade, UN has voted many times that USA must remove its illegal blockade against Cuba till today. They are refusing. There was another vote the USA uses its funding to UN and uses its veto power to undermine the UN resolution when it comes to the embargo against Cuba. Cuba is punished because it can produce its own pharmaceutical. It can run its own independent empowering programs in Cuba. Cuba. USA doesn't want that. So we in the EFF were inspired by Cuba and will always stand in solidarity with the people of Cuba. If you are xenophobic, you have no home in the EFF and you have no home in the Eastern States. If you call people Makwara Kwara here in Eastern Cape, go to where we had the Women's Day event. Go to Matatia and go and look at how Cossacks and Sutus live together. They have embraced each other's cultures. Now even Tosa men wear the blanket of Basut. You are too late, Sesi. You are still calling people Magwara because you don't hear their names. That is not your problem, it's your problem of illiteracy. Don't blame us. How do you hate the person because you can't hear their language? Yet you can't hear. English, 
you come here Africans, but those people you don't hate them because they are the ones who control your mind and tell you who to hate, who to love. I told you about Dalim Kofi yesterday. If you say there is Makwere Kwere here in Eastern Cape in East London, that Dalim Kofi is Kwere Kwere. Because there is Mpofu in Zimbabwe. Then there is Mpofu here in Eastern Cape. Which Mpofu are you talking about? They are Zulus in Zimbabwe. They are Zulus here. Actually, they are Tossas in Zimbabwe. They are Tossas in the Eastern Cape. When you say people are Makwere Kwere, it means it includes you. Because when we start attacking the Tossas speaking Zimbabwe, Makwere Kwere, we will not know which one is which one. You are happy here. In East London, calling people Makwere Kwere and beating them up. You are inspired those criminals in Kaute. When they are done with Zimbabweans, they are going to go for Tossas. You are not from here. Kutukan didn't happen. That's when you are going to realize that from xenophobia, it goes to tribalism. And once it goes into tribalism, it's unstoppable. It leads to genocide. People are going to kill each other based on language. By the way, our language, all Africans, especially in South Africa, is the same. You can't speak Hosa throughout and not have a, 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 a spade wave in the Kosa, it might mean something else, but we've got the same way in Spain. What is bright in, in Kosa? Ognyo. And Ognyo by Spain means something else. <laughs> but we've got the way in Spain. So be careful to classify people based on pride and based on language originality. We must classify people on their blackness. When they are black, they are my brother, they are my sister. Africa is white. No white man is going to tell me who's my brother, who's my sister. Stop sucking up to the talks of white people because when you say, hey, what's the to you by a white man. So it means you are both fighting to work for a white man. That's what you're proud of. In the EFF, we are not fighting for any savings. We are fighting for ownership of the savings. We want to own the mind. We want to own the bank. We want to own the land. And then work for ourselves. Because anyway, these farms here were the ones who are making them to produce. White men does nothing except to hold the paper and say, this is my property, this is my land. On the basis of that paper, we must worship the white men on our own land. Fighters, look deep inside you and start loving yourself. When you love yourself, you will love the people of Angola. And when you love the people of Angola, you will salute the Cubans for having fought in Kutokonaval for the independence of Angola against the apartheid regime and pushed it back. And that push of the Cubans in Kutokonaval is what led to the weakening of apartheid. And that's how we see, we saw apartheid coming down and democracy emerging in South Africa. Know your history and know your people. Do not allow the white man to tell you who is your person, who is not your person. Comrade, today we have peace in Ethiopia thanks to the African Union. But the African Union 
which we criticize a lot, must make sure that it does that even in DRC, which is about to engage in war with Rwanda. We don't want the people of DRC to fight with the people of Rwanda. The Africans must stop using weapons against each other, but start negotiating through peaceful means to find African lasting solutions. We achieved peace now in Ethiopia, but the African Union must not wait for more lives to be lost. We are about to lose more lives in the war between DRC and Rwanda. And the African Union must intervene immediately now, as in yesterday, because black lives matter. They shouldn't wait for millions to die, like it happened in Ethiopia. It will take forever for Ethiopia to recover from those many bodies that were killed in that battle. We want those who died in that battle in Ethiopia to be compensated. We want families to be reintegrated. We want peace to last forever in order to restore the dignity of the people of Ethiopia. Ethiopia must come back and occupy its rightful place in the African politics so that Ethiopia is not only known for war, but for being a solution orientated country that is not just big in Africa, but can contribute positively in the lives of our people. Fellow fighters, as we live here, our branches were not getting more than 100 members. But now that the conference is over, we are going back. We want more than that. December is our just around the corner. Comrades, the Congress of the Communist Party of China has just concluded. We are inspired by the Communist Party of China. We are looking up to the Communist Party of China, but we will never be like the Communist Party of China if we are not grounded. The ground must be a shield for every fighter in the Eastern Cape. No fighter must be bought. If you are bought and you don't have money to buy the cold one, just look for the forms of the EFF and go and recruit people. Why would a fighter say, I'm bought? We are looking for one million members. We want to be like the Communist Party of China. Be the biggest political party that is socialist orientated in South Africa. We are the only leftist political party in Parliament of South Africa. We must be bigger than all of them. We will only govern if we have members. Everywhere where the ANC has members, we must have members. If they say in this house, they are members of the ANC. Uh -huh. We must also have members in this house because we are taking the ANC toe to toe. Township, Fairplay, University, Eslaleni, everywhere. We are taking the ANC toe to toe. Our people are looking for an alternative. And you can't be an alternative if people don't know you. People say as cartel Bokongolos, but there is no alternative because they don't know you. So go and introduce yourself, especially in the rural areas. Eastern Cape is a rural province. You can't always say no, we want to be here here in Islam, I want to thank you for that. That's all. You are only big in Dantan, you are everywhere in Dantan. You are everywhere in Motherwell. But you are nowhere in Tat. You are nowhere. So how can you not be there when our people
people are calling for you to be there for them. Comrades, when a young person who's eight years old, ten years old, when they get asked, who do you want to vote for? All of them, they say EFF. Without faith. You know what it means? It means we must build it so that when they turn 18, they must find it so that their dream comes true. They have an opportunity to go to the EFF. But if you guys destroy this organization now, you must know you've destroyed the ambition and the future of that 10 year old who says, when I grow up, I want to go for the EFF. The pregnant mothers of sorrow, they are looking for the EFF. Why? There are no roads in sorrow. When they are pregnant and they are about to give birth, they must be taken up there with a wheelbarrow to go and catch the ambulance at the main room. When it's raining, it's even worse. As a result, African children are given birth, are born, rather, in a river. Because the distance between home and the main road is too far. That time, this pregnant mother is being helped by a young boy who's 13 years old pushing her in a wheelbarrow because the ambulance is there. Before they arrive at the ambulance, the mother says, stop, stop, papa, stop, stop. They stop. Just hold this leg of mine this side. In Kavasha, in the Swaga camp, ambulance can't go in. In Kalita, in the Swaga camps, Ambulance can go in. That mother must be well bound to the ambulance. When call my neighbor, she's ashamed to be held by a boy. Go, go, go. Run, run, go and call my neighbor. When the boy is about to leave, no, 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 come back, come back. Just hold it, hold it. When these kids grow up and have no respect for life and they kill with anger, we all ask ourselves, where does this anger come from? We don't have that detail that they got exposed to things that they were not supposed to be exposed to at the end of When we destroy the EFF, that mother who's going through that and that boy who's going through that, they imagine that one day there's going to be a car road here that will no longer give birth in a wheelbarrow, will no longer give birth in our shed. The EFF one day will come and tell us this one the year of one day will build the clinic that is going to run for 24 hours. You come and shatter that dream. They are crying tears. They are waiting for someone to come and wipe their tears. When they look at the red beret, they see someone who's going to wipe their tears. Look at them when you visit their homes in the EFF in Regalia. Their faces just brighten up because they know the hope has arrived in our village. Thank you very much, fighters, for being disciplined, continue being disciplined, and elect your additional members in a disciplined manner. I'm very happy to have been given an opportunity to come and greet at this occasion. I know the proper speech was given by my brother, deputy president. I was not supposed to even come. Because it is the right thing to do to come and greet you. I'm very proud of all of you. I'm very proud of the EFF. Manga! Manga!